Today on the show, we're talking about Bo Burnham's new comedy special on Netflix, Inside. The special was directed, filmed, and edited entirely by Bo himself over the course of the pandemic. All of it takes place in one room. Now, if you've watched the special, Bo has a lot of conflicted feelings about what it means to be an internet creator, what it means to have an audience. And that's a lot of what we want to talk about today on the show. But additionally, Bo actually started his career on YouTube in 2006. Since 2006, his YouTube channel has accrued over 300 million views. So for me, it feels like one of the first times we've seen someone who started out as a YouTube creator grow into this multifaceted entertainer who actually now is also going to be starring in an HBO series. Yes. That's crazy. He's playing Larry Bird. What can't this guy do? On Wikipedia, he is cited as an American comedian, musician, actor, film director, screenwriter, and poet. And for me, it feels like Bo Burnham fully encapsulates what it means to be a creator. All right, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are trying to get to 300,000 subscribers. And if you're new here, we cover what's happening in the creator economy every week here on this channel. All right, Colin, roll the intro. What did you expect going into watching this special? Bo Burnham to be an incredible musician, honestly, and to make Mm -hmm. some really clever points about society at large. Just because I've watched Bo Burnham before, I've seen his specials, and I actually have an understanding of what he believes about the internet and social media. Yeah, I'm familiar with with what he's done on YouTube and and even more so, I think, um, after watching Eighth Grade, like familiar with his viewpoint on, you know, the the, the dangers of social media. But also what's interesting is like, that's how he is Bo. He is Bo Burnham because of the internet. And now he, you know, kind of comments on what that all means. So I think his early experience with the internet paired with his age uh, offers this really unique perspective because he's been on the internet since 2006. I remember being in high school and people sharing his videos, his Mm -hmm. songs. Mm -hmm. He ended up growing a huge following from that and doing comedy shows, but he developed so much anxiety on stage to the point where he was having panic attacks on stage and he ended up taking some time away from comedy. More recently, he's come back with specials where he talks about that relationship with the internet and with social media. So now the reason I bring up his age is because we're also, you know, within a, within a year of, of Bo's age, Bo was born in 1990. We were both born in 1989 and, and being that age right now means that we lived the first part of our life without the internet. I think we're the last generation that experienced what does it mean to live without the internet? And we've been able to juxtapose that with what it means to live with the internet. And I think that's a really interesting position to have, to know what life was like before this. So I think Bo brings a lot of that perspective to this special, as well as the the pieces he's made in the past, like eighth grade. Yeah. He said in the past that if you have the opportunity to live without an audience, you should take it. Yep. And when he made eighth grade, he showed us that every kid now grows up with an audience mm-hmm. and that that's actually a pretty uh, unnatural way to live, to have to always think about how other people perceive you digitally. I don't know that there's an opportunity right now to live without an audience. I think that's a very conscious choice that you have to make. Like the default is to live with a audience. Um, the sizes are all you know, relative and, and different. Uh, everyone lives with a different size audience. Um, but it's pretty hard to do now in, in the age of social media to live without an audience. Sometimes it doesn't matter also how large the audience is that follows you. It's about your perception of the audience, right? I mean, you can have 30 people who follow you or post your first video to TikTok, but if you're in middle school, you can perceive what people may think about that video that you're posting or that photo, Mm -hmm. right? And we talked about this actually with Ryan Trahan about editing and the mere act of editing is assuming how other people will perceive your image and your thoughts with every single frame and how detrimental that can be to your mental health. So let's get into this special specifically inside. I think First and foremost, he is incredibly creative. I, I was thinking about sitting in a movie theater and watching Eighth Grade and thinking about how this this guy is the same guy who came up with that and was able to direct that, is able to sit in a room by himself and make something look like a movie. You know, and I think that's what YouTube has been and, and continues to be, is just creator with camera telling a story. But then you layer on top of that music, you know, rhythm rhyming, 
writing these like crazy analogies, uh, commentary through, he did this, you know, he has a sock puppet at one time that kind of, he creates conversation. He has all these different vignettes about like different, different parts of, of life. He has, uh, these life as they pertain to the internet, life as they pertain to the internet, FaceTiming your mom, yeah. dating, observing other types of people on the internet. I loved how many of his songs followed native internet formats whether it was the reaction video format that he did or the Twitch streamer section. I thought that was super, super clever. When he made the song about Instagram, mm-hmm. it was all formatted like an Instagram post. Yeah, I mean, he, he's wildly clever, man. Like in the way he edited, like the way he did all of it, it was just, it was so good. Like thinking about those projections too, like he had to like set up the projector to like hit at the right time. There's another, vi- there's another uh, song that he did where he has a light uh, behind his, his back and he hits it on every like snare and you're just like, this guy is just a savant, yeah, man. Like completely. he is so unbelievably creative. Right from the start, he makes it extremely clear yeah. that he's the one adjusting the lighting. He's the one adjusting the camera. He's the one making the music. The title card says written, edited, shot, and directed by Bo Burnham mm-hmm. right from the beginning. And then there's a scene in the, in the opening where you're just watching him set up the cameras. Mm -hmm. right from the get-go and a montage of him adjusting and setting things up. And as a creator, it's a very familiar scene. Oh yeah. You could cut those moments from a lot of our videos where we're checking our hair Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. looking at the lens to see what it looks like. That's the thing is he wasn't just adjusting the camera. He was looking at himself. And I think that for me was, uh, was a theme that came up in the film quite a bit where he's looking in the mirror or he's looking into the lens uh, or he's watching back what he has just done. Yeah, you're and, looking at and, his whole process. And when you watch that as a creator, you're like, oh my God, this is... Like when you watch someone else do it, it feels so crazy. And the deep like self-awareness of, of how you look and, and what the lighting's like and how you're, how you're going to be perceived by the people on the other side. Bo Burnham's strength is his self-awareness. Mm-hmm. And a lot of creators' strength is their self-awareness, right? The more that you understand yourself in relation to others, the better that you can empathize with the audience Mm -hmm. and perceive how they will respond. But that can also be sort of a crippling feeling to Mm -hmm. overanalyze yourself in relation to other people. There's a quote that I learned in film school that I think is uh, was one of the most powerful things I ever heard, which was a camera is a tool to teach you how to see without a camera. And basically it's suggesting that as an artist, your job is to observe. And a camera makes you hypercritical, right? And hyper observant. And when you take the camera away, you've now, as an artist, just become very aware of everything because you're thinking of it through the lens of, you know, what does it mean? How do I portray this to someone? How do I like, you know, what what is the meaning behind this? I think that's a really interesting thing that I think all creators, you recognize like your job is to be observant and to be hyper aware of things. Bo starts the whole special being super aware of the fact that he's who he is making a comedy special and like healing the world through comedy, right? Like this kind of like self-awareness of like, this is a ridiculous thing. I'm not, am I providing value or not to the world? I have no idea. You know, almost this, this sense of like, I know it's ridiculous that I'm making comedy right now. Like, is this helpful at all? Um, and I think being hyper observant of others and self-aware is, is, basically the job of an artist Mm -hmm. Uh, and then portraying it in, in, in this way. And with every vignette and every song, it continues to hit the theme really that the internet and social media have had a toxic impact on all of us. Mm -hmm. That's what he keeps coming back to, right? Whether it's in relationships with your family or with dating, whether it's with politics, he kind of hits different parts Mm -hmm. of the world and, touches on how the internet has impacted those parts of society in a negative way. Mm -hmm. I think the interesting thing though, is that the mere existence of the special speaks to the incredible power of the internet Mm -hmm. and how it's this contradictory sort of thing where it is equal parts toxic as it is empowering. Yeah. I think the special itself was meta, right? Like him creating something for the internet while he's talking about how, the the toxic effects of the internet while he's self editing himself while he's you know creating these scenes with lighting and and uh, fixing his hair is just like it's exactly what he's talking about why the internet is bad 
he's doing a thing for the internet for other people to watch. And there's a couple things that that stuck out to me. There's there's one song in there that um, was about the internet, and it was the 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 main line was like, "Can I interest you in anything and everything all, all of the, the time?" time. Yeah. It was an amazing song. Could I interest you in everything all of the time? The way he did it was like almost like he was a genie. You know, it reminded me of like an Aladdin type song, like a yep. musical where it was really talking about um, the fact that like is it bad that we have access to anything and everything all of the time? We can see, you know, whatever we want um, in an instant. And there's a line in there where he says, boredom is a crime. And I thought that was a really interesting thought and, and almost like observation of myself where I recognized like when I was a kid, boredom was this pathway to do so many things, to go outside and explore and do anything. And in, in any moment, like I have anxiety about being bored if I'm standing in line for something, I'm on my phone. Yeah, boredom is cured in an instant now. It's cured in an instant. And and the question is, should it be cured? Probably not. It, to, to be creative and to be observant and to interact with the world, like boredom's actually required. But boredom has been, you know, essentially taken out of the equation for all of us now. Yeah, because we uh, now have anything and everything all, all of the, the time, time. In, yeah. the, in, a, in the palm of our hands. And uh, there's a scene where it opens up and he's like laying on this pillow talking into a, into a microphone. And he, he asks, is it a good thing that we've, we've allowed and rewarded these companies to essentially build algorithms to keep our attention constantly? And he's uniquely positioned, like a lot of us are in this age demographic, to talk about this because Bo Burnham is a year younger than us. Mm-hmm. He lived a lot of his youth in the pre- mobile first social media age, right? In the, mm-hmm. uh, he saw the rise of the internet like we did. So we're part of this before and after generation that knew what it was like to live through that boredom and to find things to do and to find ways to be creative without the internet, mm-hmm. but has also become a product of the post internet world. Like we are uniquely situated right. in that space. So now the creator kind of, takeaways for me on this. There's a few things that struck like very close to home for me. One of them was watching him in the last seconds of his 20s when he sat there with a clock that's ticking and time is ticking and he's working on this project and he says, in 60 seconds, I'm going to be 30 years old and you know I wanted to be done with this by the time I was 30 and I'm not, so I'm just going to let the clock tick. And I personally remember the last seconds of my 20s were also spent in front of a computer editing. And it was one of the most grueling projects we've ever worked on. And I remember the anxiety of like just editing and editing and editing and being like, okay, wow, I'm never getting out of this space. You know, like I'll just constantly be in this project. And um, I think that moment was like very, I could just, I could feel that moment in a way that I, 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 just couldn't believe um, when that was happening. Also connecting with the fact that like when I was turning 30, I thought that was like this big milestone and I didn't want to be doing that. I didn't want to be sitting in front of a computer and living my life through the internet. And there was another point where he said um, he was almost done with the special, but he was like, but I don't, I don't know if I want to be done with it because then I have to live my life. He's in a mental and physical prison, right? But that has become comfortable to him. It gives him purpose. He, he has he has an irrational fear of the physical world, right? Which I think a lot of people do have because it's a lot more comfortable to move throughout the internet sometimes. Yes, and curate your image, curate how you spend your time, while no one else really sees how you're truly spending your time. Especially if yeah, hundred percent. Especially if you're a creator and you have that power to edit. You know, you have that power to to create a life using the keys and using your creativity. What happens when you have to actually go live that life? Like that's completely different than, than, than curating it and creating it. And the line I wrote down right after that was, what happens if we stop living on the internet? What happens if we stop this show? We've been uploading to YouTube for 10 years. Do I know a life outside of that? I'm not positive. What if what we did on a daily basis had nothing to do with the internet? I think about that sometimes of what if I got a job as a park ranger? <laughs> right. Truly. Yeah. And I just spent my days, my work was outside. Right. And that was it. 
They have no idea what that would be like. And, and I think it's interesting, like we truly live in this like metaverse, right? This, this, this internet space where all, most of our connections are through, you know, Twitter or through Slack and then through Instagram and YouTube. And our validation comes from, from the views and the feedback from the audience. And our, our whole day is just wrapped up on the internet. I, I interact with far more people digitally than I do in real life. Oh yeah, me too. Like my community here in, in Venice is extremely small of mm-hmm. actual humans that I interact with. Also the <laughs> variety of spaces, quote unquote, that I, that I interact with are, is much more vast online than it is physically, right? Like how many different YouTube channels you go to or websites or, you know, w- the different spaces you see online, much more significant than um, what we see in real life. And to tack on to that, we're older, the younger generation. I mean, we just, the next week we're releasing a video about Roblox. Like the under, younger generation is living in spaces online, whether it's through gaming, through Roblox, through, um, you know, through social, through TikTok, like they're, they don't know a world without the internet. They were born and it was just like, this is in your hand and this is the world you live in. This is where you build valuable relationships. Yeah. And where you build value. Like this is how you get a job and how you make money. Like we have not ever had a career that's not attached to the internet. And socially, our comfort level for interaction is within that internet world. I think that's one of the most fascinating things about the special is that it takes place in this one single room where he is eating there. He is working out there. He's doing everything within that room because of the pandemic and because of this project he's undertaken. But it doesn't feel that strange. Truly, the no, scenes yeah. are very recognizable. Right. And he's able to take part in every part of life, social life, whether it's dating again mm. or politics or right. talking with his parents. Everything can take place now within that room. And yeah. it doesn't feel that strange. No, it doesn't. I, I think especially because like as YouTube creators or consumers of YouTube, um, you also are typically viewing your favorite creator within the confines of a singular space. Even us. Right now, you don't really see us outside of this room, right? Everyone used to think that we live together. Yeah. Because they only see us together in right, this frame. Within the confines of, of a frame. Um, and I think that's really interesting to think about. Like, it's hard to imagine someone outside of that, but it's also comfortable to see someone just in the context of whatever that, that space is. So there's two other things that I thought about with the special. One was the last scene where the, the way the special completely ends is there's a projector of the last scene and it's being projected on the wall and Bo is sitting and watching. He's watching himself and he slowly smirks a bit and then it cuts. And the way I interpreted that was that at the end of the day, you're doing all of this for yourself. Like at the end, of the, at the end of this whole special, it's just him watching the special he made. He's doing this to please himself. He's yeah. doing this to please himself. <laughs> and I realize that that is something we talk about a lot that like, make sure you love what you're doing and you are your audience and, and a lot of things like that. But it's, it's this crazy juxtaposition at the end where you realize like, he's the one watching this and he's the one who says it's, it's done and he's happy with it and it's for him, but it's also for all these other people to enjoy, but at the core of it, it's for him. And I think that was one of the most interesting parts to me was, was having it end. Any of the scenes where he was watching himself back made me both shudder and also recognize like the, the, the reality of being a creator of watching yourself back and of, of, of self critique and of just self also indulgence of being like, Ooh, I did that. Well, that's good. I like that video or I like that clip I shot. Also at the end, he tries to leave the room that he's in Mm -hmm. and it's a, frightening experience for him and he ends up going back inside. And I think that speaks to the fact again, that he is comfortable within this cycle of creating for himself. And even though the special is over, the cycle is just going to start all over again. Mm -hmm. He has to go back inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's who he is. He's a creator. He's meant to be inside as much as it sends him into emotion, emotional turmoil. That's who he is. Yeah. It was, that was fascinating the way it ended. So the, the closing thought for me was also, you know, thinking about the fact that Netflix bought this thing <laughs> was wild to me. And thinking about the concept of 
imagine if Bo Burnham's not Bo Burnham and pitches this to Netflix. That's an immediate no, right? I don't think Netflix picks this up if, if he's not Bo Burnham. And how did Bo Burnham even get created? Bo Burnham got created through YouTube and through the internet. And the, the opportunity to just put out content without a gatekeeper and say, this is my idea, I'm going to put it out. And I connected with that concept thinking about 10 years ago when we started our first business, which was a, a YouTube channel dedicated to lacrosse. And the first initial thought for me was, oh, I got to call up some, some TV producers and see if we can make a TV channel dedicated to lacrosse. And the obvious answer was no. There's no world where that makes any sense. But with the advent of, of social media and YouTube, I think the positive and potentially the negative, but you know, the reality of it is that there's no gatekeepers. You can put out whatever you want. And if an audience connects with it, it opens up and unlocks a flood of opportunity, right? And that's what happened with Bo Burnham is that he started just having this feeling that he wanted to put stuff out there and he had a place where there's no, there's no gate that you have to go through. You just make it and you put it out. And I think that there's positives and, and negatives around that. Yeah, I mean, there's a moment within the special where he is looking at himself from 14 years ago projected onto the screen and it's a painful moment for him. Yeah. But it's clearly an essential moment for him to be where he is today. Yeah. And now he is directing movies like Eighth Grade. He's mm -hmm. going to be acting yeah. on HBO. Like he has this career and whether he's happy within it or not, you know, it's not really us to say. Yeah. But it's clear that where he is is because of where he started by right. not having those gates. Right. And I guess the question is, should, should there be more, you know, it, whether it's gates or guidance to help you through and navigate this because being alone in it is also very it's overwhelming. probably not gates. It's just guidance right. and community. Mentorship, guidance, community is really important. Like, cause the isolation of being a creator is very real. The thing you don't see with creators is the hours the majority of the hours are spent alone in a room watching yourself, editing yourself. That's the reality. And that has to take a toll on mental health. It's, it's not even a question. I think that's the thing that's not discussed enough. And that was, I'm really happy that Bo made this was that like, there's a lot of glamor when you reach a certain amount of success as a creator and a lot of validation, but you have to understand like how taxing it is to be a creator. Like it is very taxing emotionally, uh, from a lifestyle perspective, like, we always talk about this. We have each other. A lot of creators don't. Like we at least have each other. And we actually yeah. have each other even just as friends. Right. If one day this is all over. Right. Like we always said, like we'll yeah, still yeah. be friends. We'll still yeah. be, we'll still be there to support each other. And that is essential, obviously. I, I think that was one of the things that, I f that felt so overwhelming for me when I watched him like come up with an idea by himself, write the, the lyrics by himself record it by himself and then review it by himself. And one thing you don't see is how many times he probably did that. How many times did he mess up? How many times did he have to reshoot? How many times? I mean, you see some moments where he's like, I can't do this. I can't do it. He tries to talk and he just can't it, do it. It kind of makes me feel sick. Mm -hmm. I've been in those moments where I'm watching myself back again and again and again to then think about filming myself doing those moments yeah. would be brutal. Right. Well, there's been moments. I remember there was a time you know, a while ago when we were recording something and, and, you know, you just kept saying the line over and over until you were just like, fuck this, you know, I cursed. Yeah, he did say that. Um, <laughs> but there's those moments that are just so intense, you know, where you're just sitting in a room and you're like, you're not even like, we weren't making much money and you're just like, what am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? Like, I'm just recording myself. Like, is this a good idea? And I imagine if I was alone in those moments, that's a challenging yeah. thing to do. Yeah, so illuminating yeah. film and <laughs> interesting to see, I, I think, where all of us take the creator economy yeah. and how we counteract some of the toxic negative aspects of the internet and social media yeah. and how we lean into the positives. Totally, having a space to even just turn on this channel and be like, oh, okay, I'm not alone. There's yeah. other people who do this and they also empathize with, with what's happening and they understand what it means to be a creator and, you know, this conversation can happen. And so I think that's what we want to encourage, especially in the, in, in the comments of this video is 
let's have some conversation about this. You know, like what was, what, what, what did you watch this special? What did you think about it? What are some of the challenges you face as a creator? Social media, what do you think? Net positive, yeah. net negative? <laughs> All right. So those are our thoughts on Bo Burnham special inside. Have you guys watched it? Uh, if you have, let us know in the comments. If you haven't, let us know what you thought of this conversation. Yeah, if you haven't watched it, we just spoiled it. We probably you. spoiled quite a but bit. But not it. really. It's incredible. You should but, still watch it. Yeah. 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 It's really good. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you made it to this part of the video, it probably means you like conversations like this and we do this every single week. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like the video and roll the outro. Roll the outro.